Apo, welcome back to Kelezo Night. It's still at NP Matapela Secondary School. It's lunchtime in Acorn Hook. And I've got a man here who's got an interesting question for our maths lit teacher in the studio. Matter first, let's meet him. Hola, Bade Gunja. Hey, thank you, bro. Umnand. Umnand. What's your name? Where are you from? Clifford Lerato. I'm from Sakan. Wabula Bula, Baba. Nga Kuluma. Wabula Bula as well, right? As well, yeah. All right. Chalabantu la peka wuti mele bugeli Kelezo Night. Kastong. Yan come la kurim kuni la makam kela keleza in kizu kurum tako tak jonze kafuna na ina. Oza we nu zale gla. Alright, what's your learner question for our teacher in the studio today? Why, when I calculate the volume of a solid hemisphere, do I have the formula? But when I calculate a surface area, I don't. That's interesting. When he's calculating the volume of a solid hemisphere, he's got the formula. But when he's calculating the surface area, he doesn't. Why is that? Over to you in the studio, Tishela. How are hello, hey guy. Uh, I believe your question went something around asking about the difference between the volume of the of a hemisphere and the surface area of a hemisphere and the difference when calculating mm. these two. So let's look at the difference. Let's look at what these concepts actually are. The difference between volume and surface area. What is the surface area? The surface area is the total area of the faces and curved surfaces of a solid figure. And the volume is a space occupied by a three-dimensional figure. So if you're looking at a box, for example, the surface area would be all the flat sides, would be the total area of all the flat sides, and the volume would be the space occupied within that box. Okay, there are several different solids that you may have to calculate the volume and surface area of, and they are a rectangular prism, a cylinder, a triangular prism, a cone, a pyramid, or a sphere. Depends on the question, and usually you'd be given the formula for each. Let's look at a sphere, though. So a sphere is a solid in which all the points on the round surface are equidistant from a fixed point known as the center of a sphere. A sphere is round. It's basically, imagine the planet Earth or a globe. That is a sphere. And what they're saying of this equidistance is that the middle of the sphere, that fixed point, if you measure any point from the middle to the, to the top, to the bottom, to the sideways, all of those distances are equal. From the middle outwards, they're all equal. So if we look at this example here, the distance from the center of the surface um, to the distance from the center to the surface is the radius. That and this and this and this, that would all equal an equal amount of distance. But the distance from the center to the surface is known as the radius. A hemisphere is half of a sphere. So with one flat circular face and a bold shaped face. So if you take a sphere, a round surface, and you halve it, you have a hemisphere. You'd have a flat surface in the bottom, and you'd have the bold shape on the top. The flat surface is circular because it's actually we're working with a sphere and it's circular. So if you cut it in half, you're gonna have that flat surface on the bottom and the bowl on the top. When you have half a sphere, the volume will be exactly half of the original volume. So if you're working out the surface for the volume of a hemisphere, you are halving the volume for the original volume. So you have a, your original volume that you work out for the sphere, for the hemisphere, you half that measurement. However, when you have half a sphere, you create a flat surface, which is a circle. As we said, if you have a sphere and you cut it in half, you have a hemisphere. And part of the surface areas of a hemisphere is that bold shape and the bottom flat surface at the, at the bottom, that is a circle. So you're working out the circle area as well. So this means that the surface area will be half of the original sphere plus the area of a circle. So the surface sphere of a hemisphere is half the original um, of a sphere plus the area of the circle, which is that flat area that you're dealing with with half a sphere. Cool. Volume of a sphere is 4 over, the formula is 4 over 3 pi r cubed. Surface area of a sphere is 4 pi r squared. Volumes are always cubed and surface areas are always squared. The radius, where r is the radius of the sphere, we know that r is actually half of the diameter, and the diameter is just the line that runs straight from one distance to the end of the distance in a round um, object. So the Earth is approximately a sphere. The diameter of the Earth is 12,756 kilometers. What is the surface area of the Earth? Give the answer correct to the nearest million. 
Alright, so what is this question asking us? This question is asking us about the surface area of the Earth. They're asking us to give it to the nearest million. But what are they giving us? We know that to work out the surface area of the Earth, we need the radius. Because we get the formula, everything else is in the formula, the pi, the squared. We need the radius in order to work it out. What are they giving us? They're not giving us the radius, but they are giving us the diameter. What do we know about diameter? We know that it is the line that runs across the object, but we also know that half of the diameter is the radius. So we can work out our radius and then just substitute it in our formula. So we know that di the diameter is 12,756 kilometers. If we divide that by two, we have our radius. Easy peasy. So our radius is actually 6,378 kilometers. Now we just put that into our formula. We know that our formula for surface area is 4 pi r squared. We worked out our radius by dividing our diameter by 2. So we, And we got 6,378. So if we times 4 by pi, we put that to the side and we multiply it by our radius, which was 6,378 kilometers, and we square that, we should get 511,185,932.5 kilometers squared. That's quite a, quite a distance, yeah. <laughs> the distance of the Earth. They did ask us, remember, and you would lose a mark if you don't put this in, so they asked us to round it off to the nearest million. 511,185,932, that's below five. So we cannot round up, instead we are going to round down. And they asked us for to the nearest million, so we're going to leave it at 511 million kilometers squared. <laughs> The volume of a hemisphere. So we know that the formula for the volume of a hemisphere, a hemisphere is half of a sphere. So we are going to half the original uh, formula for a sphere. We're going to half that and we have our volume for the hemisphere. The volume for a hemisphere is a half, open brackets, 4 over 3 pi r cubed. This is the volume for the sphere. But because we're dealing with the, uh, the hemisphere, we are multiplying it by a half. And that gives us the volume of a hemisphere is 2 over 3 pi r squared. The surface area of a hemisphere, where we would work out the surface area of a sphere, we're going to again half that. So that's 1 over 2 plus the surface area. But because the surface area of a, a hemisphere includes that, that flat surface at the bottom, which is actually a circle, we now have to work out the surface area of the circular bottom. And the surface area of the circular bottom is obviously the surface area of a circle. So we're adding the surface area of the circle to the surface area of the hemisphere. And that gives us 3 pi r squared, where r is the radius. Let's look at our next example. If the surface area of a hemisphere is 5,430 centimeters cubed, what is the volume? So they're asking us what is the volume in this question, but they're not really giving us much. We know that we need our radius in order to work out our volume. And we don't have our radius in this question. What do we do have? We do have the surface area. So we're going to have to try and figure out what our radius is from that surface area. And by doing, we're going to substitute a little formula. And by doing that, we know that our surface area of the hemisphere is 3 pi r squared. And we know that the surface area that they gave us was 5,430. So we're going to do a little bit of a substitution here in order to get our radius on, our, on its own. And once we have our radius on its own, we can then work out the volume. So we know that 5,430 was the actual surface area of the hemisphere. So we, we want to get our radius on its own. How are we going to do that? We're going to take the 3 pi and move it over to the left-hand side of the equation where we have the 5,430. Because we're moving it, we are now going to change the equation up a little bit, and it's actually going to be divided by the 5,430. So if you divide 5,430 by 3 pi, we get 576.14. But that, that is our radius squared. We need our radius in its simplest form. So we're going to square root that. If we square root 5, 576.14, we get r is equal to 24. So now we have our radius, it's 24, and we can just substitute it on our formula. 2 over 3 pi r squared, it would be 2 over 3 pi which are with our radius, which was 24 squared, and that gives us 1,206.37. Always round up or down, that is below 5, so we're going to round down. It's 1,206 centimeters cubed. Volume is all. Back to Keleza Nazi, still here at NP Matapela Secondary School in Akon Hook, chilling here with one of the students who's got our second learner question for today. Angelis, Uba Wagaba. 
I'm Ilsent Matumbeni. I'm from Kululaini here in Pumalanga. From Kululaini? It's in Pumalanga, not Limpopo? It's, it's in Pumalanga, not Limpopo. You sure? Yes. Because I just came from Limpopo and they told me it's from Limpopo. No, you're yeah, lying. It's in Pumalanga. Okay, so what is your learning question for our teacher in the studio today? Okay, my question is how to convert from meter square to centimeter square. All right, how do you convert from meter square to centimeter square? Simple and straightforward, over to you in the studio. Cool, thanks for the question and it went something like this. How do you convert from meter squared to centimeter squared? So we know that when we're converting from meters to centimeters, we, as a standard, multiply by 100. But if we want to convert meter squared to centimeter squared, we're dealing with a different unit. We're dealing with a squared unit. So we're going to multiply our 100 by our 100, and that gives us 100 squares because we have the two dimensions. So the e easiest way to illustrate this is by an example. Let's look at an example. We've got a little box. They give us the breadth, the, the height, and the length. They ask us. Natalia is covering a box with gift wrapping paper. If the box is 0.32 meters high, 0.25 meters wide, and 0.41 meters long, how much paper will she need? Ignore the overlaps which would be necessary. Use the formula surface area is equal to two length times breadth plus two length times height plus two breadth times height. So we're gonna work that out. They give us the formula and they give us all the dimensions. So it's easy, we're gonna just simply plug it into our formula. We've got that here. We've got the two multiplied by 0 0.41 meters, which is our length, by 0 0.25, which is our breadth, plus two um, by 0 0.41, which is our length, times by 0 0.32, which is our height, plus zero, two times 0 0.25, which is our breadth, and 0 0.32, which is our height, that gives us 0 0.6274 meters squared. What are we gonna do if we wanna convert this into centimeters squared? There are two ways that we can do that. One is that we could just convert each of the formulas, each of the values on its own, and then substitute into the formula. So we can individually convert our length, our breadth, and our height, um, from meters to centimeters. By that, we would just be multiplying it by 100. If we want 0 0.32 meters in centimeters, we're going to multiply it by 100. That gives us 32 centimeters. 0 0.41 meters into centimeters, again, multiply by 100. That gives us 41. And 0 0.25 meters, 2 centimeters, that gives us 25 if we multiply it by 100. We now have already converted from meters to centimeters, so we're just going to plug it into our formula. And if we do that, um, 2 length times breadth plus 2 length times height plus 2 breadth times height in the um, worked out centimeters, we would get 6,274 meters squared, centimeters squared. If we wanted to do it a little quicker way, but maybe um, less standard, we would we would take what our original um, value, which was 0 0.6274 meters, and multiply it by 100 squared, and that would give us the same answer. But it's probably more precise if we would just work out our each value and we substitute and convert each value before substituting it into the formula. And that gives us 6,274 centimetres squared.